brought to you by Hula Frog, local things for kids to do. HulaFrog.com. Hello, and thanks for watching Illusionist Michael Howell Live. I'd like to thank our sponsor, Hula Frog. I'd also like to thank our guest sponsor, Macaroni Kid. Another special thanks to Williams Magic Shop, Mildred and Dildred, and Arizona Families. If you guys want to find out what supplies you're going to need, you can go to IllusionistMichaelHowell.com. It will be at the top of the Illusionist Michael Howell Live link. Uh, we're going to start off uh, by showing you guys a quick magic trick. We've got a card here, an ace. And then we've got a bill. Usually you can do this with a borrowed, you can do it with a borrowed bill. Um, you don't have to. So I'm gonna wrap the bill around the card like so. In fact, I'm gonna fold, it's hard to do it with, without, I'm gonna fold the bill. There we go. And then I'm gonna fold that around here, fold that around there. And the, the card is going to magically go through the bill. I'm going to show you guys what I mean by flipping the card over. Now you guys can see it. Let me get a little closer, guys. Opening up the card like so. Look at that. Ta-da. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. That's pretty cool. It's in the middle. Now I'm gonna fold this up and then magically, ladies and gents, with a little snap, pull the card out. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'll be here till the end of this episode. All right, guys. Now, uh, upcoming events, uh, COVID. <laughs> there are none because of COVID, so. Uh, stay tuned. We'll let you know if there's any upcoming events. Uh, now we have a science experiment. For the science experiment, you're going to need corn syrup. You're going to need soap. And you're going to need a bowl of some sort and a pipe cleaner. Now, um, I didn't have time to stop and get a pipe cleaner. But basically what I have right here is a straw cleaner. Uh, so it's, uh, you just get a pipe cleaner and then make a little round circle at the end. So it looks kind of like that. And you've got your own blower. Because what we're doing is we're making ghost bubbles. You're gonna, um, this is already pre-mixed for me. You're gonna need one fourth cup soap, uh, two tablespoons of corn syrup, one tablespoon of water, and a pipe cleaner to bend to make your bubble wand. And then you, uh, once you're done, you're ready to blow. And you've got your ghost bubbles. And these are actually better than regular like at just doing soap and water. See, sometimes they stick, which is really cool. Look at that. That's what makes these even more fun than regular bubbles. Try that at home, guys. They are called ghost bubbles. Dun dun dun. dun. Bum ba dum ba dum. Okay. Now we have a very awesome guest this episode, ladies and gentlemen, Frank Powers. He is a man of many talents. Let's go into the TV, here we go. Hello guys, I am so excited to welcome uh, Frank. Uh, thank you so much for being a guest. How's it going, hey, man? I'm okay, all things considered. <laughs> We're both trying to kind of make it through this crazy pandemic. I know that recently, surprisingly, even though it's still crazy, I've been getting a lot more work. I just, uh, last Saturday, I did uh, three magic shows, uh, obviously socially distancing. Um, sure. But I was super excited to get, you know, those shows and honored. Yeah. Um, so you do so many things, uh, as you guys can see, this background of his that he has up, he, he painted. It's absolutely incredible. He's a, such a talented person. But not only do you, you, you draw, you paint, you do comics, you do all that stuff, but you're a radio host um, and you, you're a professional host. You host a lot of events and different things. Um, what got you into like painting and drawing? What inspired you to, to start that? Uh, always was the art kid when I was young, since second grade. I knew what I wanted to be when I grew up, which is actually a gift. A lot of people you'll meet, they go to college, they don't know what they want to do. And I knew since second grade, I wanted to either be a stand-up comedian 
or a, a cartoonist, right? And then what ends up happening is with my comics and stuff, I draw myself as a stand-up comedian. So it's a cartoon. I did do that. Like, yeah. that's what I, right? And then I do wind up kind of fitting that dream where that's what I grew up to be is I fought all that shyness from being a kid, you know, and being a nerd. And that's why I was able to draw. I spent a lot of time by myself doing that. And I end up just like realizing that I wrote a comic 10 years ago and now I do what I dreamed in the comic where I'm on stage doing like, that's what it is. It's me in a tuxedo on stage. I'd never done it with a slideshow doing jokes. And I'm like, and now I do that. So it was, I am my dream come true, which that's is nuts. cool, man. And what you do, like the, the way you do comedy and all of that, put that together is a super unique thing. And that's what makes you, you. So that's your niche and that's your, your selling point, which is really cool. Um, I, I, I was laughing, uh, quietly in my head when you said you spent a lot of time by yourself i think that's the same with magic man <laughs> we're we're slightly nerdy and but that's okay we like we like what we do and you know we uh we have yeah. fun doing it Ner nerdy yeah. nerdy is not a bad word everyone's nerdy. <laughs> like all, again like our nerdy ways <laughs> yeah even even your biggest sports fan he's just a nerd for football that's what it is they cosplay all day right with their jerseys and nonsense it's that's the same true. okay so We're all nerds in this world. That's right. Um, and and it just means that you're obsessed and you have a passion. Exactly. You have a passion for something, whether it's reading comics, writing comics, drawing comics, reading, watching magic, creating magic. Yeah. Passion is what passion. it really is. And it's funny, like if like when I was younger or, you know, if people say, oh, you're kind of a geek or you're kind of a nerd or uh, one thing I say, at least I have an idea of what I want to do with my life. So there's a lot of people yeah. like college, I was listening to somebody outside uh, just say that they didn't know what they wanted to do when they grew up and they're in college. <laughs> right. They're going to school and their parents told them to go to school for filmmaking. So they're going to school for filmmaking, but she's not even sure that's what she wants to do. So I think uh, yeah. my advice to a lot of kids or youth is really just try a bunch of things, you know, and, and see what you have fun doing and then make that your path. Because Especially you nowadays, because there's never been more opportunity because of the internet and because of especially these young kids because remember so i teach art from time to time i do with the comic book mobile right so i teach art to kids here i'll just tell you so i have this thing i created called the comic book mobile it's a 1969 vw bus that i drive to schools events and all this stuff i dress up in a fun outfit put on art shows set up coloring areas it's really great super fun uh, i give out inspirational posters um but that's what i tell the kids is that it's, it's a, you want a skill, you know, um, and art is just like a trade, just like anything. And uh, having an entertainment career is a little easier than it used to be because it's up to you now. You can start a YouTube channel and you have a magic channel. That's just your brand. If you went back 20 years ago and went to the TV station, could I put a magic channel here? No, right? But now you don't need to, you don't need to ask any permission Yep. any more at all if you put out quality stuff if you work hard and honestly you're one of the only guys in town that works probably just as hard as i do with this i'm like known for working hard you're also yeah. very no you you work so hard sir michael you really do and that's why we cross paths a lot right yeah. hard work is the secret i know it sucks right doesn't that yeah. suck everyone <laughs> There's no shortcut except nepotism or, or networking, maybe. But networking is a lot of effort, too. Most nerds don't have that skill to go to a place they've never been, mingle with strangers, go up to a table at a, at a party and just say, hi, how are you all, right? It's right. very hard for people to do. I have bested that skill. Yeah. I have made sure that I have fought my shyness since I'm like 12 or 13. I said, no more. I said, I will not, because we're talking about being a nerd, right? I am definitely at the forefront of like the nerd revolution of, yeah, I'm a nerd. That's right. I'm proud of it. Like I was in my eighth grade yearbook, like, that's right. Live long and prosper. I'd hold it up like a gang sign. Like I'm doing live long and prosper. Like, yeah, it's in your face. That's right. What you're going to do? Because I would do nerdy stuff and then I, but I'm, oh yeah, what you're going to do? Like still this loud, fun, full yeah. of himself kind of personality. Right. Because I was kind of faking it back then. You're just, yeah, I'm the man. Because you've got to fake it till you make it. Exactly. And along the lines of like hard work and dedication, I mean, you're going to get a hundred no's when you ask about things. And 
that's how I got my first Vegas show. And I'll say it once and I'll say it again. Like I called and pretended like I knew the entertainment coordinator and that's what got me through. That's what got me my first Vegas show. So that kind of, that dedication that you have, that I have is no matter what you're doing in life, whether you want to be a doctor or an artist or whatever, you just kind of have to stick with that. Now you're a radio host as well. Yep. Um, that was my dream you- job to get. Dream yeah. job. I always wanted to be on the radio. <laughs> I did it. I, I yeah. can't believe it. Right. And what station? It's uh, it's KFMA, right? Yeah, Rock 102.1 KFMA. Oh, that's awesome, man. That's great. That that happened because, here's the other thing, everyone. You've, I'm sure you've done some free magic shows, right? Because you just need Absolutely. to do it, right? I have, yeah. I got the job at um, KFMA. That was only because I volunteered at Downtown Radio, 99.1 FM Downtown Radio, oh, wow. for a couple of years for, for free. I didn't get paid. I did that. You know, it's, but you have a radio show. It's really fun. That experience, and then me doing my hosting gigs. I'm Hotel Congresses, like host for everything. New Year, I'm the guy that counts down. New Year's, Halloween for seven years, all of that. Yeah. The owner of the radio station, the radio station was a sponsor of Halloween. The owner of the station saw me doing my thing. And I was, what I was that year, I was three Jim Carrey's. I was Ace Ventura, then I was Dumb and Dumber, and then on the on Halloween, I because Halloween weekend happens, right? So three times, right. um, and then on Halloween, I was the mask, and we did full makeup, everything, and I was the mask. I did a swing dance routine, never danced in my life. It was amazing, right? He saw me as Ace Ventura and was like, "I cannot believe that you were in character the entire time." <laughs> I was not. I'm just really fun and loud. So, so he anytime I was talking, he's like, "Oh, you were Jim Carrey the whole time." I'm like. Oh no, that was Frank when I was off stage. I just really like to talk and be fun. So that got me a position there because and wow. here's what happened. When, when they were hiring, I called them up. We're, we're not looking yet. They were hiring. S- three months later, when they're hiring again, they called me. Oh, that's awesome. That's a good right? story. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's just, you have to kind of like, and I tell every young magician is perform, perform as much as you possibly can, get that experience, and eventually. Uh, you know, you'll land those paid gigs, but you got to just anywhere you get an opportunity to perform. And actually that was the advice that Lance Burton, my mentor that performed the Monte Carlo uh, told me when I first met him. So that's, you know, good advice. So you have to be, and, cause, cause even just jump on you, right? You have a thing like uh, we have, it, I'm sure. I feel like you have it less than me. You're not shy. And that's even with I'm going to send this guy a message. Yeah, sure, he might be busy, but so what? Let's ask anyway. Hey, do you want to do my show? Here's the proof of what I do. Here's what I've been doing. You're not afraid to go bother someone because you know what? You're not really bothering anyone. And everyone sells themselves short quickly by doing that, where how many friends do you have that they're like, let's order pizza. Okay, you have to call. Where they don't even want to call the pizza guy, right? Yeah, yeah. It's you crazy. have to get over being embarrassed or being afraid to ask hey do you want to right right because- and with, with this pandemic right now i'm actually doing something of that nature i'm waiting to announce a big event but i'm calling a random place and i'm saying hey let's work together and mm-hmm. do this because i'm not sure how you're going to be able to make it through but together i think we could pull through it and make a cool event um, a lot of it has we'll been it comes together <laughs> yeah well, let's try i always talk about this in any Conversation, conversation with my friends. I talk about a Venn diagram. You know what a Venn diagram is? Mm-hmm. Right. So in case you don't know what a Venn diagram is, it's whenever you see a diagram that's like circle, circle, circle. And those parts that cross over are this thing. All right. And the example I'm giving you is because do you hear what I was doing to get that radio gig, a job on the radio? I was hosting gigs, right? I volunteered and did a gig, didn't get paid, right? And then I was networking. So because of those three things, having almost nothing to do with applying for the job, I got the job because of these three things. If I didn't volunteer, I don't get the job. If I didn't make myself, if I didn't beat my stage fright and make myself a host of a thing, I don't get that job, right? Some of it was right place, right time. Yep. Because that he was there that night and saw it, right? Yep. That's honestly how I get most of my work now. It's, I'm it's, sure of I, it. I go do one gig and I just actually, I got... A corporate gig from Saturday, and in the same at the same event, and I got a singer center gig at the same event, um, because you know, and that's the thing you said earlier, quality. 
And this yeah. is why I say in volunteering, you, you gain, you honed in your skills, you got better at what you did. Um, and that's kind of what you got to do before you start charging. So when you start charging, you know, you're, you have something that's worth selling and people yeah. pick it up and then you just grow your business from there. Yeah. But, and you know, you're worth it. You know, that's yeah. the thing is that even inside you go, you know, and, and you learn, I used to give away a lot of posters. <laughs> it was costing me money. So I'm like, okay, I got to figure out a better way to do this. Let's give out posters and mini prints. So this way I get four out of one. And exactly. this way I was like, okay, I learned from that. But, oh, well, one weekend, a bunch of kids got a bunch of great frame posters. So what? Yep. You know, and that's- That might have made an impact on their life and that's... they'll remember that. So, and that's the thing is like, you know, I remember, you know, the very first magic show I went to, like I bought a magic wand and that later on in my life, you know, I still remember that person, you know, so that's kind of, it's kind of cool, which is why I have magic wands I sell now with my logo yeah. and all that information on it because they'll remember you, you know, it's right. a business card without, <laughs> you know, but it's still something cool. You know, they still get to do something with, with the business card. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's a brilliant business card, sir. That's brilliant. It, it works. It works. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, man, well, thank you so much for coming on the show. Um, it, uh, where can people find out information about you? I know you have Facebook. I would love if you just went and go looked at thecomicbookmobile.com. That's amazing. And that's my website. I'm proud of the website that I built. Um, that, uh, that as well as uh, Facebook, you can look up, find the comic book mobile. You can go become friends with Pissed Off Panda. That's my cartoon character. <laughs> there he is. There he is. There he is. There he is. Boom. Pissed Off Panda. That, he's right. all over you. <laughs> I know. Well, he, he turned 18. 18, so I have a cartoon character. 18 oh, years I've been doing cool. something, right? It feels really good. Can I make an announcement before I go? Would you like to hear a new thing that just happened? I would love to hear it. Guess what just happened to me two hours ago? What happened, man? I'm excited. I got a new job. You know what my new job's going to be? I have absolutely no idea. What is it? I'm a college professor, and I'm going to teach kids how to do digital illustration at the Southwest oh. University of Visual Arts. Congratulations, man. That's so cool. Heck That's yeah. Awesome. So, and you're doing, that, it, you're doing this virtually, I'm assuming? Or? Uh, a little bit of both. Um, the thing okay. about the schools opening, that's tough for, for public schools because they have 40 kids in a class. Right. This is a class of six kids. Easy, oh. easy to separate, easy to go one-on-one, -on -one and do a little online if we need to. Cool, man. Well, congrats. I'm going right. to let you know that online teaching, because I do it every summer for Pima, yeah, very hard. <laughs> oh, I know. I've done a little online teaching. I do some okay. online classes over at the Comic Mobile. I like it because I'm used to this. I like live streaming. This yeah. is a green screen. My house is a green screen. Here, look, cool. see, I painted it. Woo! See that paint? That's green paint, but I can do whatever I want with it. So <laughs> even magic. that, I make it so that I can really put on a show for That's people. That's so cool. Well, I would recommend it. I recommend getting make yourself a green. Very easy, Michael, and you would crush it. You don't actually have a green screen. I just got to use it. <laughs> Do it. It's it's worth it because it yeah. makes these Zoom calls a little more fun and you can design backgrounds you that you can interact with where, look, move back. I can have images here. I say, see this, this, go. that, this, that there. And it's like doing the weather, right? Yeah. Woo! Hey, so, maybe I can get you to like, I can hire you to draw like a background for my uh, show. That'd exactly. Cool. Yep. Yeah, that'd be really neat, man. Heck well, yeah. anyways, thank you so much for coming on the show. Yeah, you can go check out his website. He also has Facebook. Um, interesting. He can do anything, guys. So if you ever need to hire somebody to illustrate a book or just draw you an invitation or something or anything, this is your guy. So thanks so much for coming on the show, man. You take care. Thanks, brother. I'll talk to you soon. Talk to you soon. Thank you so much, Frank, for coming on the show. Like I said, that guy is talented. He drew his very own background, guys, for this show. It looks so cool. I'm going to have to make myself a background because that was awesome. For this next experiment, you're going to need Pop Rocks. Da, da, da. You can find them at the dollar store. They are hard to find. You're going to need a balloon. And you're going to need a cola. Now, this is going to be messy. I actually just threw a pie tin um, over there. So you're going to need... Um, oh, there's a pie tin here, but then I... That, that's the pie tin that you threw over there. Oh, that's the pie tin that I threw over there. So... Um, basically, while I'm doing this, there's a tub over there. Uh, Jericho will get something because it is, it's very messy. You're going to need a bottle of Coke, a packet of Pop Rocks, a balloon. Um, and then if you want, you can use a paper to make a funnel to put the Pop Rocks in the balloon. So uh, you're going to pour the rocks uh, into the balloon and then put the balloon onto the soda, lift the balloon up, and the Pop Rocks will fall in, creating an explosion. Now, there was like an old myth back in the day that if you drank soda, 
and ate pop rocks, her head would explode. Ah, don't scare, don't get too scared, kids. Um, <laughs> that's a myth. It's not true. Um, and to prove that, we are going to pour some pop rocks into a balloon, like it said. And I'm not sure how much. I'm gonna open it up. I'm just gonna fill her up so it's a really good process here, but your head won't explode, guys. That's a myth. Thanks to Mythbusters, we all know that. All right, so that's probably a, a good amount of Pop Rocks. Now, you're gonna put the soda bottle in here, open it up, make sure it's nice and it's a fresh soda. Stretch the balloon around the top, like so. And see, look, it only blew up the balloon a little bit, which means if that's the case, your head will not explode. <laughs> all right, guys. So that wasn't it. Wasn't messy at all. I was worried it would be messy. I, I better be safe than sorry. All right, guys. Um, so that's the pop rock experiment and myth busted. Booyah! All right, guys. It's that time where we do the jokes of the day. Come on, Jerrica. What did the coconut say to the watermelon? Ah, I'm just kidding. Okay. What do you call a train with bubblegum on it? What do you call a train with bubblegum on it? A choo-choo train. <laughs> Get it? We're in the bubble jokes because we played with bubbles today. A um, little fun fact, if you wait, you were saying if you wait with the bubbles and to pop them, it creates like this little white ghost looking thing. So that's why they're called ghost bubbles. So make sure you do that. Leave them sit there and pop them. You'll see the ghost. Uh, what did the bubble say after meeting a pin? What did the bubble say after meeting a pin? I get your point. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, what's the difference between a piano and a fish? What's the difference between a piano and a fish? You could tune a piano, but you can't tune a fish. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was, that was a terrible joke. All right. <coughs> what, did the, uh, what did the fish say after he broke the vase? What did the fish say after he broke the vase? I feel guilty. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, hey, if you think of a better fish pun, let me know. Get it? Let me know? <laughs> like a minnow? <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much uh, for watching Illusionist Michael Howell Live. We have a very special guest next week, guys. He has worked on uh, many movies, TV shows, Young Sheldon, a bunch of other stuff, uh, the High School Musical uh, TV series. He's a sound engineer, very talented, uh, works out in California, great guy. Uh, Michael Ferdy is going to be on the show, so make sure you guys stay tuned uh, because you won't want to miss that. Thanks so much, guys, and take care of yourself and have a great day.